How about those Texas Rangers? They blew the chance to win the West, but then took advantage of a trip to the playoffs as a wild card and also took advantage of some great pitching. The Rangers put up four against the Rays to open their AL wild card series against Tampa Bay. Texas just needed a win today to move on to the divisional series against the Orioles. Our own Josh Jung right here from San Antonio. And Corey Seager drove in runs, and the Rangers took advantage of some pretty sad fielding by the Rays. The Rays committed four errors. And what about that Texas pitching? Texas started Jordan Montgomery, only allowed a smattering of six hits over seven innings, even made a great play to help with his shutout hopes. The diving catch in the second inning, that'll do it. Did he scare you by deciding he was going to make a gold glove play? Yeah, it wasn't a soft landing, was it? Uh, yeah, he's a big fella. And uh, a nice play, great catch by him. We're in a tight uh, situation there, so big play at that point in the game. And just shows you how competitive he is to go out there and die for that ball. All right, so here's another look at it. Runners on the corners. Jose Siri pops it up, and the dive. That's six foot six Montgomery. Nice grab. That's a gym. That's why those pitchers practice that fielding thing. Hey, the Rangers are going to look to sweep the series today, 208, here on KSAT 12, live in the other AL wildcard series. It's Minnesota. They got a big game from their stud, Royce, rookie Royce Lewis, to a 3 1 win, putting an end to the Twins' dreadful 18 game postseason losing streak. That dates back to 2004. Winner faces the Astros in the NL wildcard round. The Phillies beat Miami 4 1. Winner there plays Atlanta. The Diamondbacks got the 6 3 win over the Dodgers. Await the winner of that one. Healthcare professionals are warning about a spike in syphilis cases and the medication to treat them is in short supply. How the White House has been called in to intervene. A college campus is still closed after as many as three gunmen opened fire on students there last night. Five people recovering from their wounds, but the fear is lingering. The gunfire started at Morgan State University in Baltimore. That's a historically black university. Students and others were celebrating homecoming week. NBC's M. Wynn with reaction to what appears to be a homecoming tradition of violence up there. A scary situation on campus at Morgan State University in Baltimore during homecoming week celebrations. Officials say gunfire erupted last night, leaving students, alumni and their families running for cover. Everybody just kind of started screaming and alerting the people next to them that there was an active shooter and that we should all kind of like brace ourselves. Dramatic video capturing SWAT teams clearing room by room at the historically black college campus. Police say five people aged 18 to 22 were shot. Four of them students. All are expected to be OK. But no immediate arrests were made. And now the FBI is joining the investigation. People were crying. People were calling me, asking me if I knew anything. And I'm I just feel helpless because I don't know. Emergency alerts triggering a campus wide shelter in place order for hours. Thurgood Marshall Hall. They're in that high rise. That is the location of the suspected shooters. One Baltimore City Council member posting on social media. It's believed there were three shooters firing into the crowd. Authorities saying this shooting marks the third straight year of reported violence at MSU during homecoming week. When is enough going to be enough? When will the sanctity of American lives and the sanctity of American college students and students who get their education outweigh the sanctity of American guns? The university canceled all classes today. The governor says he's keeping in close contact with officials on the ground as this investigation continues. M. Wynn, ABC News at Morgan State University in Baltimore. We have a reminder for you. If your phone lets out a pretty weird noise later on this afternoon, you don't need to panic. The federal government is testing its emergency alert system. The test will be sent to all smartphones in addition to TVs and radios around 1.20 San Antonio time. The text will follow saying it's just a test. This is the second time ever that a test alert will be sent to every smartphone in the country. Can you imagine the noise on that? Everybody's going to think it's a weather alert. It's not a weather alert. <laughs> no. Not a weather alert today. It's just a test. Tomorrow. What are the dogs going to do when that thing goes off? Well, 
<laughs> yeah. question. I don't know. Yeah, the good news is even with tomorrow, we're not really expecting any organized widespread severe weather or anything like that. So that is good, but hopefully we do get some notifications from our KSAT Weather Authority app saying that we have some heavy rain detected in our area. First, though, I do want to get you a look at dew points. This is one thing that's going to be contributing to that rain tomorrow, all of the moisture that we have in place. So your dew point is how we measure that low-level moisture in the atmosphere in the 70s in many locations that is very much in the oppressive category and that's why you can feel it as soon as you step outside and when you take a look at how that is affecting our feels like temperatures these yellow numbers that are right next to the actual air temperature you can see that we're already in the mid to upper 90s for most in terms of those heat index values Pleasanton it feels like 100 degrees right now that is likely going to climb by a few degrees as we head into the peak heating time of day again 92 the actual air temperature here in San Antonio by 2 o'clock 94 to 95 is that forecast high later on this afternoon here in town tomorrow a different story as we see that front move in we are expecting a better chance for rain and thunderstorms it's still going to be warm all things considered into Friday as well we still have a high in the 80s expected it's after we get that secondary push of cooler air into this weekend that will really start to notice those cooler temperatures. So once again, we're going to time it all out and get you the details coming up in just a few. Thank you. Jamia. In your health headlines, the United States seeing a dramatic increase in syphilis cases and the medicine to treat the sexually transmitted disease is in short supply. More than three dozen public health groups are urging the White House to do more to increase the supply of the medicine by Cillin. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says syphilis cases rose 74 percent between 2017 and 2021. And congenital syphilis, when a mother passes that infection to her baby during pregnancy, increased more than 203 percent during that time. The White House says it is working to fix the supply chain issues that are causing the drug shortage. And Pfizer has said that it will be increasing its production of bacillin. KSAT, along with our community partners, sponsoring this year's Light the Night event. It's a night to support the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and pay tribute to patients, survivors, and those who have passed away from cancer. Lee Waldman will be the MC for the event at Hemisphere on the 14th. It starts at 6 o'clock, registration free. It's open to everyone, and participants are encouraged to raise money to support the mission. If you scan the QR code on your screen right now, it's going to take you to our KSAT 12 fundraising page, and that's where you can join the KSAT team and make your donation to help us reach our goal of $5,000. We do have a phone bank happening right now. Here is the number to call. Yeah. Representatives from the Blood and Tissue Center Foundation are being available to answer your donation questions, and they can register you for a blood donation as well. You can also make a financial contribution contribution, and help Team Myra. Our own Myra Arthur is helping raise money for the Blood and Tissue Center. In just a few minutes, we're going to check in with her, see how those donations are coming. She wasn't that far away from her goal. Let's do it. Keep those phones ringing. Hate returning packages. Uber may be able to do it for you now. We're going to take a look at a new feature that would allow you to hail a ride for your return shipments. Happening right now, our KSAC Community Phone Bank benefiting the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. And you can help by calling our phone lines and registering to become a blood donor. But it's not the only way that you can help. My Arthur's been in the phone bank all after, look, that's hemoglobin and Mike. Is that right? Isn't that hemoglobin? This is Harry. Harry, I thought Harry was hemoglobin. So, well, technically, I think you're right, David. Okay. So, Harry and Mike, Ursula, you said it earlier. You said that you thought we could hit you the can goal do it. of 15,000 by the end of the show. I love your optimism, but I had to call in the big guns because we need <laughs> a little bit of help here. So, we've got Harry from the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, our very own Mike, the KSAT mascot, and the number to call right now is the one you see right here, 210 351 
1363. So I have been challenged to be a champion for the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center between now and October 21st to raise $15,000. And do you know we have raised a thousand bucks since this phone bank began 42 minutes ago. That is amazing. And I am so excited and so thankful for all of our generous viewers. And I know that we can get to that $15,000 mark. So Harry, Mike, you guys think we can do it? When's the last time you donated? Well, I guess you don't really have to. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I know that this is such a wonderful cause for so many people, and it really stays right here at home. That is the best part about this. It is actually saving lives, and the money raised here is going to go towards new vehicles that are critically needed to transport blood, plasma, platelets to hospitals, but also to bring donated blood into the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center labs, where it's processed into all of those things. You're taking a look at some video that we shot during a case that explains really showing how that blood is processed. What happens after it gets donated? So you can check that out online right now. But the important thing today from 12 to 7 o'clock tonight is to hit that $15,000 goal. I know we can get there, Ursula. I am as confident as you are. So are these guys. 210-351-1363. Help us truly save lives right here at home. Guys. I am sure that Mike has some deep pockets there in, <laughs> in that mascot uniform. I mean, I think we so sewed them in, didn't we? Mike needs to get on the phone. Yeah. But I guess he can't. Oh, he so. can't. I get it. He could answer it and just have to somebody else. David, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. How was science with Sarah this morning? It was great. Was it fun? We made the um, visual, since if you don't have glasses, yes. we made a way for you to be able to see the uh, eclipse through a box of cereal. Using cereal boxes. Is that great? The eclipse viewer, I thought it was awesome. It and the reason too. why I bring that up is because today marks 10 days out from the annular solar eclipse, the ring of fire, the moon's gonna move in front of the sun. And hopefully we don't have any clouds because if not, we will be able to see it here in San Antonio. So get your glasses, make your eclipse viewers from your cereal boxes. We've got more information up at ksat.com on that, as well as the changes that we have moving in as early as tomorrow and into the weekend. We'll detail that after the break. Uber is going to take your returns off your hands if you want. The rideshare giant has added a service that drops off e-commerce packages at a local post office, FedEx, or UPS outpost. Uber says drivers can take as many as five prepaid sealed packages. They need to be valued under $100 and weigh less than 30 pounds. The service costs a flat fee of $5. But Uber thinks, the Uber thinks that many people are going to opt into this because they dread online returns, don't you? According to a February study from the National Retail Federation, nearly half of consumers would rather sit in rush hour traffic than stand in line to make a return via mail. I've been there recently. I have a question for Mia. So we've been talking about how South Texas here in San Antonio, Bernie, all the way over the, through the Hill Country is going to be a great place to watch this eclipse. What if we have family or friends not in South Texas? Is this just not going to exist or will they be able to see something? It's going to be a partial eclipse. Okay. So remember back in 2017, uh -huh. what we kind of saw here in San Antonio and South Texas, it's going to be similar to that. It won't be the ring of fire, but they will be able to see a partial eclipse. So. Yeah, that's what we'll be monitoring October 14th. Again, 10 days away is when the annular will occur here in San Antonio and across portions of the Hill Country as well. Before we can get there, though, we do have welcome changes that move in in terms of our temperatures, especially this weekend. Uh, it's still going to be hot today, climbing into the 90s, but that front is expected to make its way through the region tomorrow. And tomorrow's when we have that that higher rain chance, about a 70% potential for numerous showers and thunderstorms, not raining constantly all day. I do think we will find some breaks, but we are expecting to find activity to track out there on the radar. Very exciting stuff. And then as we get that secondary push of cooler air this weekend, that's when we'll really start to see those temperatures fall 
more fall-like feel, lower humidity in store as well. Not what we're seeing across the majority of the state of Texas right now, though. Temperatures in the upper 80s for a good chunk of the Lone Star State, 90 in Corpus Christi, 92 already in Laredo. But up in the panhandle for our friends in Amarillo, it is a different story. Temperature right now of 61 degrees, currently 62 in Bismarck, North Dakota, 54 degrees right now in Casper, Wyoming. Not going to get quite that cold, but it could be close, especially by Sunday morning and into Monday morning, depending on the cloud cover. But again, we are expecting that drier and cooler air to work back in. So while it's still going to be muggy again tomorrow morning, we'll start to see those temperatures fall. And by the way, if that verifies the upper 50s by Sunday and Monday, that would be the coolest mornings that we've seen since May 1st. So we'll continue to track that as well. Until then, just an isolated chance for a few showers to a stray thunderstorm this afternoon and into the early evening. We'll keep about a 20 to 30% potential in the forecast through the overnight as well. But the best chance moves in tomorrow, especially between about mid morning to midday for us here in San Antonio. As we see this front move in from the north here, 7 a.m. across portions of the hill country near Fredericksburg stretching over to Rock Springs, the Southern Edwards Plateau. That's when we're expecting that line to start working into the region. It approaches San Antonio and Bear County in between about 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then it will continue to work its way farther south as we head into the afternoon. Some lingering rain in spots is expected into the afternoon and then notice by tomorrow night. This is 10 p.m. The bulk of that is already expected to work its way farther south and just by wake up time Friday morning we're going to keep a 10 percent chance for a straight lingering shower in the forecast but that's about it dew points will start to fall by friday night but it's really into this weekend where we'll start to see that drier air really take over and it'll start to feel a whole lot better here in south central texas until then we have to deal with the humidity today 89 degrees over at the airport a dew point of 71 means that it feels like 95 degrees this lunchtime hour speaking of 95 degrees Degrees. That is our forecast high temperature later on this afternoon, 90 by 7 p.m. If you're stepping out for any Wednesday evening plans, those thermometers will fall into the 80s later on this evening. We'll monitor that rain chance as we head into Thursday, and then we are excited for that lower humidity and cooler temperatures into the weekend. We'll be right back after the break. I want to talk about a fashion statement, a fur ball with legs. <laughs> ran on to the runway in Paris. It's, just, it's always so weird. It's just strange. On the runway. All right. <laughs> CNN's Jeannie Mose explains why they stole the show. It gives a whole new meaning to the term ball gown. A star is born at Fashion Week in Paris, dubbed the fur ball, and underneath the fur ball... I had a harness, and it took about seven people to help me wow. stand up. But getting dressed was the easy part at designer Christian Cowan's show. Once out on the runway, the fur ball bumped into singer Sam Smith, who happens to be the designer's boyfriend. Smith had to nudge the fur ball away. She proceeded down the runway. Then bumped into front row spectators. The fake fur ball had eye holes, but... What could you see? I could truly only see, like, shadows of things. Just before reaching the end of the runway, model Mahjan fell over and had to be lifted up. I had lost my balance because I had carried it for so long. Designer Christian Cowan wrote on Instagram, she came into Paris Fashion Week like a wrecking ball. Quoting Miley Cyrus, who the designer has dressed. Like to those who call the fur ball a stunt, the designer's rep says. A Christian enjoys a sense of chaos. And knows how to create buzz. The design house says the fur ball already has at least one customer wanting to buy it. How big was the cat that coughed that up, joked a commenter. At least this ball gown is one size fits most. Like a Ginny Mose, CNN, New York.